Okay, well, welcome and thank you for being here. My name is Grace Karambidi and I work with Mikhail as a program manager. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about why we're here today. Uh, this is a network meeting and the network meetings for Mikhail focus on non-ESOL related resources that are available in Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. And this is to equip administrators and instructors with the knowledge that they can share and support their own learners with. So today's meeting is on connecting learners with employment resources. Uh, before I start, I want to uh, acknowledge and say and thank my colleagues for being here right now. Rudy's on uh, on the line, so thank you so much for being here. Um, something that I want to share with you is uh, there was going to be a link. It's called a. a Jamboard. I made a Jamboard for this meeting that I would like for anyone, if they would like to use it as a, um, as a notes, like a, kind of like a shared notes. So I'm dropping the link in the chat and I'm going to share my PowerPoint. So Right here, you will see the link. If you should have received the link in the chat, and the jam, uh, the Jamboard is a tool that you can use to take your notes. Um, on the left hand side, which is right here, you'll see that there are sticky notes and images that you can add to the to the Jamboard, and you can use it to write anything that you find interesting or add resources that you don't mention today. And I will send that to you at the end of the meeting, and then you will receive some periodic updates throughout this meeting on the notes, uh, on to remind you that you should uh, add to the Jamboard. So thank you so much again. And I'd like to uh, begin by highlighting a partner organization. Um, uh, in the coalition, and that is Classrooms to Community, which is also C2C, or formerly the Literacy Council of Montgomery County. I am pleased to introduce Denise Hill. She is the Director of Community Impact at C2C. Denise Hill has been an educator for over 20 years. She believes in the power of education to empower the individual she serves. Her work addresses individual, cultural, and national triumphs and tragedies, and is designed to provoke thought, compel dialogue, and most importantly, importantly, foster change. Thank you, Denise, and I will stop sharing my uh, PowerPoint. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, let me get mine together here. <laughs> that is not it. <laughs> here we go. All right, are we good with the slide? Yes. Awesome. Um, I'm going to take a few moments. Thank you again for allowing us to be a part of this and sharing uh, how we connect learners to employment resources. Again, I am Denise Hill, the Director of Community Impact, and our website is Learn with C2C. If you'd like to learn with C2C.org, if you'd like to get any more organ information about us organizationally. Uh, but in general, our C2C programming includes uh, course adult education around ESL. For those who are looking to improve their English language skills, uh, academic and workplace English, which is kind of a higher advanced version uh, for ESL learners, GED college prep courses, digital literacy, uh, workforce development, as well as entrepreneurship uh, workshops and classes. And we continue to build our programming each year, but for our purposes today, we are focusing on workforce development, because that is how we connect our learners and those who participate in our services from the general public to employment services. Um, who does C2C connect to resources? Again, our enrolled learners, those who enroll in any academic course within an academic year, and we try to keep within an academic year because uh, we know things change and sometimes people will come to us for resources, uh, but not be enrolled in a class. Being a lifelong learner is kind of key to being able to position yourself to be employable um, and remain that way, as well as the general public. And those are those who come to us through our workshops or through partner organizations. How do we connect learners to resources? We do that two ways, through our workshops, 
they take place both in person and virtually. Uh, they're typically one to two hours workforce focused around a specific topic. And because it's a workshop based model, uh, learners are able to apply the skill that we, we discuss in the workshop and actually leave with having grown uh, that skill, whatever the, the particular topic and skill is at that point to, to improve orally their language skills as well as that employable skill to uh, allow them to get a better job in the future or to even get a job. Uh, it's led by our C2C staff so that we ensure the quality of the curriculum and the content, but it's supported by TAs. So we have the ability to really hone in on the needs of the learner by working in smaller groups. We also utilize our success class, which is completely virtual. This is a one to three hour uh, per class uh, it's a kind of workshop model where we do, it's it's topical for each session, uh, but it focuses on soft skills and job readiness and really getting people to the point where they have the, the skills that will not just make them employable, but make them successful once they are employed so that they can continue to push through toward their career goal. That is again led by a C2C instructor uh, to ensure the quality of the curriculum, but it's supported by our community coaches. And if anyone has a question about that, I can answer more um, if you like. But our coaches are, are different than a TA because their focus is workforce readiness and to get people towards their goal, not necessarily academics. Here are some of the topics that we cover in our workshop. It's a plethora of them, but it focuses on oral and written communication, everything from how do you introduce yourself to colleagues, interviewing skills and resume writing. Those are our most in-demand topics. Um, do you know how to negotiate a salary when you are able to get a job? Do you know how to uh, how to to talk to a supervisor about a challenge with a coworker or or even a challenge with the supervisor? Uh, but we also focus on digital workplace communication as well. So uh, if you're able to take the, that resume now, are you able to produce it digitally? Do you know how it needs to look in terms of its format, or do you just have the pieces to the puzzle uh, as it relates to you know, emails, do you know what a professional email looks like? Do you have a professional email address? Just some of the basic workplace skills, um, but in a digital format. For our success class, again, it's soft skills focus. So uh, goal setting, career choices, understanding that, you know, there's a difference between a job and a career and, and what is it that your ultimate goal is and what type of education would you need to utilize and, and access to be able to achieve that goal and, and job readiness skills. Again, those soft skills that, that accompany the, the skills that we give you in terms of certifications, in terms of language, in terms of writing, so that you don't just get a job, but you're able to thrive into a career and, uh, and on and on. Workforce resources that are available to all of our classroom learners include a monthly student newsletter. In that newsletter, we include flyers from partners that relate to job fairs that are upcoming, um, maybe available jobs that are looking to be filled quickly. We'll include that in there as well as any of our upcoming workshops. So students can kind of appointment set in their calendar that if this is a skill they need to work on, they can join us at that particular in-person or virtual workshop. Uh, learners also get referred to us from instructors because our instructors are constantly talking to our learners about their goals, especially as topics come up in their ESL education. Uh, maybe the, the unit is on um, working with, in, with, with your child's teacher. Maybe that's unit and, and the, the parent, you find that, that that student hasn't gone to meet with the teacher because maybe they don't have the, they feel like they don't have the proper clothes to go and show up at their child's school. They don't want to embarrass their school. And so the instructor hears that from the learner and sends a referral to our outreach department. And the outreach department will reach out to that student and say, hey, do you need clothes? Not just to see your, your child's student, but do you have the proper outfit for interviewing? Do you have the proper um, tools that you need to interview? And we then connect them to either partners or resources to make sure that they have those. A community coach, again, is that person that helps coach them to their goal, gives them necessary steps to achieve their employment or higher education goal. Um, on our website, we have a student resource page that anyone can access that connects learners to employing employment partners, as well as other social service needs. Um, we often come up with individualized job readiness plans 
when a learner sits with us and says, hey, I want to get a job, there's a checklist. Okay, do you have a resume? Uh, have you transferred any credentials from your, your country into an American system? Uh, do you need an outfit for an interview? Have you done the mock interview practice that we provide for you? And, and they go through a, a readiness plan to ensure that they're not out there just setting themselves up for a disappointment um, that could be a hit to their confidence. In addition, we have academic workplace English and career pathways classes that are um, for those learners who graduate out of our ESL programs. Um, once they, they hit that mark of success and they've gotten that, they still kind of have confidence issues sometimes. And so we provide um, more advanced level English classes that will help them be, build that confidence that will accompany the skills that they've been developing as well, as well as referrals to um, our partners. And this is just some of our employment partners that we work with, WorkSource Montgomery, uh, Equus. I actually just left a workshop that I did at Equus in downtown Silver Spring, um, helping learners understand the holidays. And so while we start talking about the holidays and what their culture does for the holiday season, do you understand what that looks like in the workplace? Does your job make you come to work on Christmas day? Is that legal? How do you discuss that you want time off? Um, we have many workshops with uh, the, the library system and just begin a partnership with identity, uh, Latin America, LAYC, also known as MMYC in Montgomery County. We work with them, the American Job Center, Career Catchers. Uh, we, we serve their clients often as well. And this is just what some of our learners look like. We've connected uh, the first young lady. She if you, I don't know if you can see her <laughs> certificate, but she graduated out of the highest level of our ESL classes. Didn't want to stop there and entered into our academic workplace English classes so that she can continue to work on her English skills in the context of what would be needed to succeed in the workplace. The young lady in the middle came to us through Career Catchers, actually, and that's a math book in front of her because she wanted to prepare for the TEAS test, which is a test that goes, uh, that prepares you to enter into a nursing program and uh, needed to up her math skills, came to us and we supported her in that. We also serve some actual employers who just want to upskill their workers or help their workers be able to be more confident just talking about their services with clients. And so this is what some of our learners look like. That's just a brief overview of how we connect our learners to employment services. If you have any questions, I'm open to them now. I did see a question in the chat from um, Pam, which is, are classes only in English? Yes, yes. We do have in our workshops because we um, allow, it, it's open to the general public and anyone of any level can show up to those workshops. We um, typically have TAs who are able to communicate with students in other, learn, in other languages. And when not, we train them on the devices and, and how to utilize translation devices so that you're still able to communicate and we communicate with them and work with them um, at, at their level. And of course, encourage them to enroll in our classes so that they can continue to study and grow. But all of our services are in English, yes. Um, there are some more questions in the oh, chat. Wow. Okay, let me look at that. Um, how are learners recruited? We have a series, that might be a, in a, a completely different <laughs> video for another day. We do a lot of outreach work, everything from street work, street team work, um, where we go into individual communities and hand out flyers and talk to people. We uh, have online ads that we run um, that's very targeted to the needs of a particular community and a particular community demographic. We, uh, our biggest um, kind of pathway to learners are through partners. The partners say, we've got this block of clients that need this service, can you do it? And we, we build a partnership a formalized partnership that will allow them to continue to have their um, clients enrolled in our programs. And we in, in turn return them with uh, a higher skilled client or a more employable, a more employment ready client. So partnerships, outreach and social media. Oh, there were other ones, I'm sorry. I lost my chat button. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. A lot. Uh, do you have a job board? We we use our student newsletter 
as our job board. We don't have one that we post on our website because we're not an employment agency, but we want to make sure that information gets to our learners. So every month we, we issue a new um, newsletter that is filled with all the information that they would, that's been disseminated to us and that we've um, accumulated in terms of job uh, availability as well as job fairs and things of that nature. Uh, great. There's another question about the level of English needed to access these resources. So our classes go from pre-literate English skills all the way up to advanced, even beyond advanced. They just don't have the confidence to believe that they're advanced. Um, our courses cover that gamut. Our workshops, again, they're open to the public so anyone can show and we're just trained to be able to accommodate those levels, which is why our volunteer TAs are super important and vital to our success because we're able to break off into those groups. And if someone needs a little more support, they're there to achieve that. But um, our success class is probably the only one that has a requirement that you need to be um, a high intermediate or advanced learner to participate in our success class. I'm gonna go to one more question, but also at the end of this workshop, we will have one final Q and A. So if we don't get to your question, we will get it. We'll try to get it at the end, and I will also leave everybody's contact information um, on the last page of my PowerPoint. So the last question is: Do you have cultural training? Many other cultures value humility over self-assertiveness. So we do cultural training among our staff. I hope that's what the question's about. We we do as a staff have a yearly retreat where we do our professional development and address those types of issues and concerns to make sure that we're on top of being able to be um, sensitive to the needs of our diverse uh, student population. Okay, thank you so much, Denise. Thank you for having us again. Again, we will have uh, more time for questions at the end, but I'd like to now turn over to the panel for today. Um, I am happy to introduce James LeBlanc, who is the Director of, of Community Impact for WorkSource Montgomery. Uh, James has James' entry into the workforce development industry was in 2012, where he was hired as a job developer for a fatherhood program at a nonprofit organization in Washington, D.C. His work has given him a sense of fulfillment with seeing job seekers develop and reach their career goals. Thank you so much, James. All right, thank you. Sorry, couldn't get off mute. Uh, thanks, Grace, and um, appreciate you having us. Dr. Hill, you're always a tough act to follow. I was like, oh, I gotta go after Dr. Hill, but um, I'll try my best. I see a lot of our partners here, so it's, it's feeling like home. And and my boss is here too, uh, Jessica Isaf, who is is in the, in the virtual room. So if I get stuck on some of these tough questions, I'll just I'll just swing it over to her after after I talk. Um, no, I'm just kidding. So let me share my screen and um, see if I can get that done. Okay, Mobile Job Center. All right. So here we are. I wanted to put my email in the chat real quick. All right, my email's in the chat. Okay. So WorkSource Montgomery, here we go. All right, sorry, I'll get everything together here. Okay. Okay, WorkSource Montgomery. So these are these are our locations. We have six locations. We're very excited about that. Uh, if you had talked to me two years ago, uh, we would have had three locations. So we have added locations. We have our uh, uh, the AJC in Germantown at the Regional Service Center there on Middlebrook Road. We have a comprehensive center in Wheaton on Georgia Avenue. Comprehensive meaning we have uh, the AJC is there as well as we have many of our uh, partners who are co-located there as well for people to walk into the brick and mortar uh, building. We do have a satellite office in East County on Briggs Cheney at the Regional Service Center there. Uh, to serve folks over in East County and um, a virtual AJC called Skill Up, uh, Skill Up America, Skill Up Montgomery. It's it's a, a a virtual learning platform where folks can go on there and get industry recognized credentials for free. 
Um, what I'm always super excited about is our mobile American Job Center, which is exactly what it says. It's an office on wheels. Uh, it is a mobile unit that we take all over the county. We'll, we will actually be at Veterans Plaza today. Today We're, we're there every Wednesday from three to six, uh, serving the folks who are going through that plaza. It has seven workstations, Wi-Fi embedded, monitors on the inside and out, a full AV system, a printer, um, laptops, tablets, and we definitely use it significantly as a community uh, engagement tools so that we can uh, talk to folks out in the community where they are and connect them to our intake team for further um, assessment of services. Um, so, you know, ever since COVID, brick and mortar traffic has dwindled. And so we want to, uh, we wanted to be a little proactive. And so we purchased this um, agent, this uh, mobile unit to take our services out especially into underserved communities uh, in this, this big county that we all uh, work in. And we also have an office at the, uh, at the jail in Boyds, Maryland, the correctional facility, the reentry job center, it's dual track reentry program where folks are, um, we help to prepare folks to return to the community. And um, once they uh, are released, um, they're handed off to our team out here on this side of the wall who are busy developing relationships with reentry friendly um, employers as well. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time on some of these slides, but this is our ecosystem, um, kind of similar to what Dr. Hill presented. So these are some of the obvious partners that we, um, that we work with. And um, I can talk more about that uh, if you have questions later these are some of our targeted workers we don't turn anyone away and obviously we want to help uh everybody and uh and so these are some of the the folks that we obviously work with these are some pictures that i um blatantly just slid in here of the mobile unit this was actually the first uh the very first uh engagement we had back in february uh, at the Islamic Center on Briggs Cheney. And we served over 50 people that day. It was very exciting. And uh, we've been going strong ever since. You get a good look on the inside. It really is an office. And um, folks can get on the internet, do job search, um, connect, register on the Maryland Workforce Exchange, and of course be connected um, uh, did, uh, to our uh, intake team for uh, further services as well. Uh, we do have a community asset map, um, and Mikhail is, is on the community asset map. Uh, if if uh, So I think most of the partners here are already on it. Uh, if not, please uh, reach out to me. I'll send you the link to, to join it. It's a really comprehensive asset map. I know that we've all seen asset maps that are not current. You call the place. They don't know what you're talking about. So we actually hired a... Um, uh, an outside, uh, uh, an outside uh, agency to help us uh, to build this. And, uh, and so there's over 150 uh, organizations on this asset map. And it's, it's really nice. It's, it's on our website. It's, it's uh, delineated by category and um, has uh, current <laughs> uh, contact information and services that each organization provides. So it really is a help for folks who are you know, like case managers who are, you know, who are trying to connect participants to different services. Uh, we also have a workforce recovery network that is a network of, I believe, 29 organizations that do workforce sort of auxiliary services, uh, such as um, uh, like culinary arts training. Uh, we do have uh, entrepreneurial training uh, for folks through this through the WRN, so it's super important because although we do have the community asset map, there are some gaps. So we are helping to fund some of these organizations to deliver services as well. And there's a partner hub that is in the works, it's coming. It'll be an interactive platform for, for us all to talk to each other um, from our various silos. I hate to use that word, but um, that's, that, that's the thought on that. And it should be, I believe it will be launched in uh, January. 
And we just, we want to be of service. That's our whole mantra. We want to serve the uh, residents of Montgomery County. It's a big county, a million people, over a hundred languages spoken. So we are just one part of this effort. All right, so this is the meat of it for our job seekers. Uh, on your left, you'll see a column that says career services. And those are services that are available to anybody and everybody, regardless of status, regardless of anything. Anybody can come in to the American Job Centers, come on board the Mobile Job Center and use our technology, get LMI information. Uh, we have free, all our services are free. Everything, everything I'm talking about is free, uh, no charge, of course. And um, we have virtual um, professional development workshops every day. We have hiring events, um, UI information, and of course, those referrals to community resources. Now, for those who are eligible uh, to join uh, the WIOA programming, WIOA is an acronym, W-I-O-A. It stands for the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, which is the legislation that passed under President Obama's um, uh, presidency back in 2014 that informs and funds workforce development efforts all over the country in every area of the country, Montgomery County being one of those areas. And should someone join WIOA, then they will get their own uh, career advisor who works shoulder to shoulder with them on their career plan. Uh, they will develop what we call an IEP, an individual employment plan, which may include occupational skills training. One of the great things about WIOA is it funds occupational skills training up to $5,000 per individual. And that is any occupation you could probably think of. It's, there's, a, there's what's called the is what's called the eligible training provider list, which, are, which is a list of training providers that the state of Maryland have deemed eligible to receive this funding. Um, so if James comes in, joins WIOA, gets a career advisor, we sit down, work up a plan, and I want to go um, and be, you know, get uh, AWS cloud training uh, somewhere. We, we identify the um, training provider and work up uh, let's call it a um, ITA, an individual training account. Uh, Worksource Montgomery pays for the training, and James uh, is launched into his career. Um, there's obviously job placement assistance and supportive services. Um, I'm sure you all know what those are. James might need interview clothes. He might need transportation assistance until he gets his first check. He might need some date, some child care assistance, what have you. Um, there's funding for that. Uh, the end game is always employment, and to Dr. Hill's earlier point, not just about a job, but about a career pathway. So that's what we're always aiming for, and, um, and so we're always encouraging our participants to stack their credentials and to advance in you know wherever they are, or if they want to switch careers, we can help them do that as well. Subsidized employment, I'll talk about that on the next slide. One of the things I really love about WIOA is the 12-month post-employment case management, which is, I call it the follow-up team. And you know, once James is placed in employment, we don't just say, hey, good luck. We actually follow up for a year after placement, uh, at least once a month, to make sure James is okay. Again, to Dr. Hill's earlier point, James might be having trouble navigating some things at work. There may be a supervisor. He doesn't like the way he's being talked to. There may be a coworker. There may be a scheduling issue. We want to help navigate through all that because it is not about just about placement, but of course, retention is, uh, you know, of course, uh, vital uh, to James, his family, and even rippling out to the community, um, the impact that this employment has. So our, for our businesses, um, we want to support small businesses uh, in Montgomery County, so we do have grants for those um, for those businesses. Uh, there's a GROW grant, which is um, a grant that reimburses for onboarding uh, workers. OJT is the subsidized employment I talked about earlier. Uh, it, it's, uh, um, you know, you, just, you, you, you um, interview James, you think he'll be a good fit, but you're just not sure, so we can work up a contract where you put James on your payroll, however, WorkSource Montgomery reimburses up to 90% of that salary uh, for a given period of time as you kind of test test James out to see if he's going to work out. Income at worker training, some businesses want uh, a cohort of their 
uh, workers upskilled in something so we can help with that. And I mentioned skill at Montgomery earlier, kind of running through it now because I think I'm taking time too much time. So this is the last slide. This is our um, this is our uh, our social media. Uh, uh, please connect with us. I'm on LinkedIn, very active on LinkedIn. If you want to see you know, anything and everything that's going on, connect with me on LinkedIn. There's not too many James Le LeBlancs in this area. So um, please, uh, please do so. And of course, WorkSource Montgomery, these are all the handles. Uh, so you can get everything WorkSource Montgomery related. And that is the end of this presentation. And I'm happy to answer your questions. I need to stop sharing. Oh, you did it for me. Did you do it for me? I think you did. Great. That's awesome, Grace. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Is there a chat? Oh, no. Okay. Yes. I saw a question. Thank you so much, James. I thought, saw a question from Pam. You mentioned that learner status doesn't matter. Do you work with undocumented ESL students? So, yes, we, we don't turn anybody away. However, most of the time when someone's undocumented, we do refer over to one of our partners uh, who works with them. Of course, WIOA, the, the funding that I mentioned, is federal funding. So you know what that means. It's, it's have documentation heavy. They have to be eligible to work in the United States. You know, we have to cross our T's and dot our I's on all that. But we do have a lot of partners who um, can help undocumented a worker. So what we do is we bring them in, we, we bring them through intake, and then intake has is able to either keep them in house, so to speak, or get them to the partner that can best serve them. So yes, we bring them in, but they may not stay in our house, so to speak. Um, are there any other questions? You can also feel free to unmute if I haven't reached your question. Uh oh, I see one. The list of requirements. Sorry. No, go ahead. Do you have a wait list? Wait. So there's a. Actually, yes, there is a wait list right now for the Wioa. Um, I'm not sure how long it is, but there is there is a a bit of a wait list. I can get back to you with with exactly how long that is. I don't think it's too extensive, but we we just had an explosion of um referrals in October and they're still working through those uh so we had over I think 400 referrals in October it was incredible so um our intake team got you know we had to start a wait list it's kind of actually the first time <laughs> but yeah capacity issue but I uh, hope we'll be able to get to everybody very soon Yes, uh, I put time, James. I am Carmen Science, a manager of the Welcome Back Center. And uh, thank you for this thorough and complete presentation. I see somebody in the chat uh, asking for your email and connecting. So this is wonderful information. I, I have a question. We, we serve internationally educated health professionals. That's the, 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 the group we serve. And um, in some cases uh, from the past, I am not sure that they will qualify for WIOA. So I I I I I wonder, I mean I'm I'm fairly familiar with WIOA, but not an expert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we have had different conversations in the past with, with your um work, work source Montgomery. Uh mm -hmm. but uh, I know it's a com it was a very complex process when I when I hear it the first time, I'm sure that things had evolved to an easier way. But I wonder if you have like a checklist of requirements for somebody to qualify for WIOA that we can present to somebody and say, look, if you have these requirements, please go to WorkSource Montgomery. And the other thing I wanted to ask is regarding availability during the evenings and weekends. While uh, there are virtual opportunities, which is wonderful, in the past, some people who may prefer an in-person training I wonder if you may have those options available during the evenings, um, let's say after 6 p.m. or weekends, because most of our participants do work. They might not be doing professional, health professional work there, but the evenings tend to be easier or a weekend. For some a Saturday, Sundays tend to be very difficult, but on a Saturday, for example, I just was hoping to see if there might, might be some plans in the future to do that. 
Okay, so I'll take the first one or the last one first, since I can remember that one. So <laughs> the um so Carmen, uh now for training, if if they if they do in uh enroll in, in WIOA, then they can choose a training provider that offers those weekend and night um uh occupational skills training. Now, if you're talking about our uh, virtual workforce development, essential skills training that we have um, daily, um, virtually. It is not available in the evenings and weekends. I know our training team is talking about exactly what you're saying, and uh, but there's nothing um, solid on that yet, but we do recognize the need. Uh, it's exactly your point. You know, people are working during the day. So, um, you know, it's just a matter of figuring out those logistics within our staff's capacity at the end of the day. Um, no, I understand. But it's good you have this in mind because I think that has been most of our uh, constraint to refer people because your workshops for resume interview preparation are fantastic. And, and, and we know that we will love that some of the international training professionals could benefit from that. And they, so they are recorded though. They are recorded. So, um, let me get some more information and get it to Grace. Is that okay? And Carmen, I think wonderful, I have email. wonderful. Do you receive emails from me, Carmen? When I send yes. all my class? You yes, do? yes. Yeah, I received I some. So. I received some. I hope, but but we can make sure I am in your mail list. Ana Mejia is from our staff, who is uh, very connected with some of the activities. Uh, she, I jumped in because she was sick today, unfortunately. But yes, yes, I'll make sure we we, we should make sure to have some time to to connect better. Okay, and for your other question, there is a checklist for WIOA eligibility, and I'll send that over as well. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, James, for all of that wonderful information that you gave. And I, funny enough that Carmen asked the question because she is our next speaker. So uh, thank you so much. Carmen is the manager for uh, Suburban Maryland Welcome Back Center with the Latino Health Initiative, which is under that. And um, the center is uses a nationally recognized model of service to assist internationally educated health professionals to obtain license and certification. And Carmen has been working in public health for 29 years, of which 17 have been at the center. So thank you so much, Carmen. Thank you, Grace, for your introduction. I have a very simple PowerPoint that I put, uh, but I think it's going to be helpful for, for uh, focusing on the key points I would like to share today. Um, just a brief overview of, of, of the center. Uh, we are part of the Latino Health Initiative of the Office of Community Affairs of the Department of Health and Human Services. This is part of Montgomery County government. We are founded by our county. We have five staff, full-time positions, uh, married positions. Um, since 2005, we started these positions have been growing with time, but today we are five county positions, including myself. Uh, we have an annual grant from the Maryland Department of Labor um, since 2009. Uh, we work very close with the Maryland Skill Immigrants Task Force. James, I think that's a group where you also participate. Um, there have been several awards, awards from other funders throughout these, these years. Um, we are a job-driven program. Uh, our focus is internationally educated health professionals uh, to obtain licensure and certifications and to enter to the health workforce in Maryland. The center participants today include nurses, physicians, and behavioral health professionals. Uh, we are very proud to have a, a nationally recognized model of services. We are part of the National Welcome Back Initiative uh, that includes uh, 11 centers across our nation. We are a welcome back center since 2010. And here are the four components of the program. I will have a very short presentation and allow for questions, uh, but here are the key components of our program. We offer guidance and support. Uh, we have an individualized uh, case management, one center staff uh, called client assistant specialist make initial assessment uh, in various areas, but of course the English is a key component as, as you all know for their success in their professional careers in the health field in Maryland. Um, the academic training includes English as a single, second language instruction, uh, board exams preparation. And to make the connection of today's presentation, yes, English is a critical aspect. Uh, most of the participants take courses at Montgomery College non-credit courses. 
uh, reading and writing two and communication skill two are the minimum requirement for individuals to apply to the program. They must have a degree completed outside of the United States. You might have an American, we had that case, a citizen who traveled to Mexico, got a medical degree in Mexico, so he still needs to do the recognition in the United States. So that's the type of services. Most of our participants are though immigrants from Latin America, Africa. Uh, we have some from Asia and some from Europe too. Um, the on-the-job practical exposure to the U.S. healthcare system and mentoring through Maryland hospitals and other health facilities. We encourage participants as soon as they are ready for employment to uh, be able to uh, get into the health field, a, a position that put them so ready in the career pathway in the field that they are interested. We do offer employment services. Ana Mejia is our workforce development coordinator. And she does a lot of the work that uh, both James and, and, and uh, uh, the, uh, Dr. Hill had included at, at the beginning in terms of not just getting them on the job, but they stay with them, especially in our case, because the goal is to obtain um, a licensure. Uh, for example, with the register with the nurses, the goal is to become a registered nurse that they were back home, but most of them may start as a certified nursing assistant and then go their way with all the English preparation, exam preparation, uh, and the advancement in their career in the in the job health field. So um, here it is a picture of one of the meetings. We have three meetings a year with all of our participants. And um, so this is um, one of the meetings at the Welcome Back Center. Uh, our offices are in Silver Spring. So this is, a, let me stop sharing. Um, I'm happy to respond to any questions. I do see a question from um, Andy. Is there a parallel program in the county for non-Hispanic Montgomery County residents? Yep. Mm -hmm. Electronic health records specialists. Um, our focus is to work with, we, we do not provide the courses. We are the coordinating the place where people come to us if they have a degree and we do the navigation. So we do not offer a class specifically for that. If an internationally trained professional come to us and would like to have a classes for electronic records specialists, we will work with them to, to find out that information, to refer them to a training, to the places where these are offered. But we do, we do not provide courses. We do provide certain trainings. Uh, somebody asked about the cultural competency earlier. Yes, we, we, we work with the participants to make sure they are able to, um, to learn about our culture in the United States, which involves a lot of cultures, right? I'm from Latin America, but there are people from Africa. We learn among each other from our group because we have people from the different places. But of course, um, a, to a Andy, we do not offer those classes ourselves. Um, I'm gonna take, I see that Monica has her hand raised. I'm just gonna take the last question from them. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh, hi, uh, everyone. I am Monica Gonzalez. I am the case manager at Linkages to Learning uh, for mm -hmm. the school Gatorsburg Elementary School. I am very excited about one specifically that has been a nurse in her country, but uh, in this country, she's never worked. Uh, she's have struggled to learn English. She has been in, in English classes for several years. Monica, we are missing some of your information, but I hear you have a nurse from another country, struggling with the English. Oh, I think um, Mo Monica have may have dropped off, but I will get her um, question to you afterwards. But Sorry. let me just say, uh, if anybody that you know from the people you serve or their families has a degree abroad, struggling with the language, yes, please, please make us call us. I will share with you, Grace, the contact information is 240-777-3168. That's our telephone number, main line. 
Uh, we have capacity in Spanish and Amharic, but we also have connection with the language line. If people call us, people can call us at any time and we can uh, make records of, of their interest and guide them on the recruitment process. But a person who struggles with the English, of course, should come to us. I think what I would like to reinforce is that if anybody does not, do not have yet our level required reading and writing to and communications too, we could refer them to Denise or to James, I mean, to people who offer the services so that they can get ready to the level we need. And if you have anybody in those, in those, at those levels who are interested to please make sure you can refer them to us. Thank you so much, Carmen. I'm going to uh, move on, but we will have the Q&A again at the end. Um, and if you could please put the number that you uh, said into the yes. chat, that would be great. So thank you so much, Carmen. Thank you, Grace. Um, it, this is a great segue because someone asked about classes and um, I have. Uh, Ken Nelson, who is here, he is the Director for Business and Community Outreach at Montgomery College's uh, WDC, which is Workforce Development and Continuing Education. Um, I, uh, sorry, he connects the community to Montgomery College for skills and academic services. Um, he has been in it for over 20 years of service and he has promoted educational innovations and has led uh, that has led to improving economic and social mobility for Montgomery County uh, residents. Thank you and welcome, Ken. Well, thank you, Grace, and I'm not running for office. <laughs> so, uh, let me get started with my presentation. I'm going to share that. I'm glad for this opportunity to be here with you today and uh, just talk about some things that you may be familiar with or you may not be familiar with in terms of Montgomery uh, College. Uh, first of all, I want to be certain, just you have already know who I am. Uh, it's been nice to be around all these years, but at the same time, it's even better to see how persons will make a transformation from nothing to becoming something that they've dreamed about for years. Let me talk about the students that we have at the college right now. We serve somewhere between an average of 24,000 unique students a year. And those learners are from all age groups. They're youth, uh, they're as young as five, they're seniors, they're as, as young as 95. Uh, students are diverse. Our average age is about 39 for a student. And one third of that, a quarter of that, identifies themselves as white. Another one third is uh, born in another country. Our students are enrolled for a number of different programs, such as uh, they're able to enroll in pre and post educational degree offerings, enrichment programs, programs that are for different groups like your group or anybody else's group, or we do contract training for those folks as well. Uh, this is to give you an idea how we're organized. We're organized into six, credit and non-credit programs. We have applied technologies. That program is like green stuff, landscaping programs along that line. Uh, the Godelsky Institute for Technical Ed, those are the trade programs, automotive, building, construction. Uh, there's other programs in that area as well. Our second area is business information and technology and safety. That's called BITS for us. People can learn uh, your clients can learn CDL training, project management, as well as IT courses as well. In our community engagement and education and learning services program, you'll have more outreach in terms of youth design programs, as well as lifelong learning. Our adult ESL and basic skills for college features the My Best program for those students who have limited to no English speaking skills, they still can learn uh, different uh, trades or other programs that are available and the courses are trained in their language or in a language. We have language skills for folks, uh, mostly for mostly for most of those in the, co in the community, but we do have people who have Hispanic on board, uh, Hamaric, some French and other uh, languages as well. The fifth area is communication arts. If someone has a, a, a ability or desire to, to use graphic arts and, and share that, they, they have that as well. And then the last area that we work with is health sciences, where people can learn health science skills and things along that line. 
I'm not able to see the chat, but I, I'll get there in a minute in the questions near the end. Then Today, I wanted to offer to you a toolkit for pathway success. And at the college, there are at least four things that you can work on. We have about 40% of our courses in open enrollment. That's a schedule of classes. Then we have some in customized training. And then another are in grant opportunities for somebody. So if you have a client that's trying to figure out what they're going to do, we would suggest that you work with them through the career coach. If you have somebody that's really going to be engaged uh, in, in trying to make a career check, uh, change, then we suggest they work with our uh, guide for job skills, career paths, licensure, and certification. And then if someone's just trying to figure out what they, whether they can improve their learning or becoming, we have a schedule of classes that's available that's usually sent out throughout the community and available in some of our libraries and other places. And they can pick that up and they can work through people who are in the program area or people who are in our customer service areas. And the last thing, if you're trying to pay for it, then we have some institutional grants that may be helpful as well. So now that I've said that, let me go back and share, share with you very quickly our career coach and what that might mean for your community. Uh, you should see that on the screen pretty, it's saving a couple. Career coach is a Sorry, tool. Are you on the website? Because we cannot see it. You cannot see it. You might have it. to reshare your screen. Okay, let me rescare. Thank you for that. Okay, thank you. Better? Yes. Okay, career coach. It has four components to it. it assessment, careers, and programs for learning, and then resume building. And in a two-minute presentation, at the bottom of the screen, you can get an overview of what's involved. But one of the things that I like about this more than anything else, you can take an assessment here. You can take a 30 question or 60 question assessment about what your career interests are. And that'll get you focused into a particular career. For example, if we go down here and I just say, I wanna go into uh, information uh, technology real quick. It seems as many people are involved in that. It'll take me to that area. It'll tell me what certificates available. It'll tell me the programs. It'll tell me the careers for that area. It'll give me a resume. If I click on that very quickly, it'll tell me what, uh, if I need tuition information, it'll tell me the program information, how you can start it. If you need to request information, it'll tell you that as well. If you wanna view program information, it just takes you to where that site is at the college's webpage. In this case, if you wanna get a certificate, all of the courses are listed that you can uh, have to take. And most of all, in some of these, as you go down, there's a contact person that can help you with that as well. Uh, let me go back to where I was before. Uh, the next one I wanna share with you is our guide for uh, job skills. And I know I gotta go to a new share, hold on. We'll work that out quickly there. And you see that now? A little yes. feedback, all right, okay. On this site, you can look at whatever industry certifications or preparations that you need. It doesn't matter what it is. And a career uh, guide offers an opportunity for anyone to look at that. Can you still see this as we, I go to this page? Just should see a wheel turning. Is that right? You see that? Hello? Yes, we see. Okay, great. The source guide? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to scroll down. Let's say you're, this is a, this can be used for those folks who say they want to go into a certificate program or they want to get an idea of how much it's going to cost, how much time is involved and what they need to do. You can see in, in some of our table of contents, there's health science courses. We have a Hispanic Business Training Institute that people can learn uh, business skills in his, uh, Spanish. You see animal care programs. You see management there. You see computer. Any one of these gives you a complete overview of what you might need to go to and get trained. 
I'm just going to click on the project management one. Not click, but I'm going to go to the page rather. And just for project management, you'll get a listing of the course, what it's supposed to do, the financial aid that's available for you. Could be a, a career pathway scholarship we have. It could be a tuition waiver. It could be an employer paid tuition. This it gives you other places. One of our partners is listed as is uh, as a resource for funding. Most of all, it tells you the length of training, the type of courses that you take, where they'll be, and what you need to know as an entry level. Tells you the registration process, and I think if I'm reading this correctly. It'll tell you the prerequisites that you have to take uh, on the left-hand side of the screen. You'll notice that. I think it's just in the same area. Uh, and it will tell you just how long it it's involved and whether there's a, certifi a certification or a certifying organization that the college has. And what you'll see here, uh, it gives you another job outlook here on this side of the page. This is a contact person that, that I'm circling right now. These two folks will help you work through this. But if you're trying to, to get funding for a complete program, these courses may be the courses that you need to take. You can add up the fees for each one of these here, right there. And there is a non-residence fee. That means if you don't work in, you don't live or work in Montgomery County, that's how you would figure that out. But if you live in the county, or you work in the county, this is the fee that you would use. And then you can add those fees up, get an idea of how much it's going to cost and how long it's going to cost for you. And if you do that, then you should be able to be successful in finding your pathways that's important for you. The last area, well, don't want to get away, get away with that yet. I might have to come back here for a moment. Let's look at the schedule of classes. It kind of gives us every our, our information for you that's going on right now. Usually our career, uh, every three times a year, we'll have course offerings we call open enrollment. And that will tell you what's available uh, throughout the, the usually the fall, the summer, and the winter months. So if you have any questions with that, our customer service can help you. We encourage people to send an email. We're very responsive there. You'll find out the information, or if you visit any of our locations at our uh, campus locations or our training centers that are in uh, Gaithersburg, uh, we do have one in Wheaton that will reopen in, in the coming another year or so. And then we're going to be expanding to East County in another uh, next year, uh, middle of the year, next year. So you can go into those. You can get help for anything that you want. And our programs are listed in a way that you can have access to them very quickly. You can click on it, find the contact people, find the current courses that are open, and that gives you an opportunity to find, to address the questions that maybe some of your clients might have. I'm going to get ready to close because I'm not certain where I am on my time, but I feel pretty good about where I am. Uh, excuse me. The last one is institutional funding. Uh, most people are going to need money somewhere, sometime to, to uh, get uh, money for these things. And the college has various ways to do this. Some of the non-credit courses can be funded through our scholarship programs from some of our partners or some of the employers that you, someone may be working for. Some of this uh, additional money is also for uh, credit folks where there's grants and scholarships. We have many people who can help you with this and some of their contact information, forgive me, is listed at this phone number, or you can email them and ask about what kind of scholarships are available for you. It may be possible if someone's interested in, in doing nursing and uh, they need uh, some financial support, there may be a, a scholarship just for nursing. It's not unusual for people who are familiar with the college, who've gone to the college, who've succeeded to leave money for somebody to, to, to advance their education. So we offer that as part of your toolkit to be successful in, in helping students move along. Now, as I get ready to close, I think I'm about to close. This is my contact information. I'll put it in the chat as well. And uh, as our time allows, I'm able to answer any questions that you might want to uh, talk about. Thank you for this time.
Uh, thank you so much, Ken. Um, the question that I saw in the chat was the URL to Career Coach, which I have responded to. I put that in the chat. Does thank anybody you. have any questions that they want to send in the chat or unmute themselves to say? I have one. Uh, I have the eternal question, and I think I know the answer to that, but I want to know if there have been any new developments. Uh, all of these programs and pathways to careers are for documented individuals. Uh, uh, for kids that are, are in the process of uh, getting probably an asylum but are not granted yet, I always want, I'm wondering if I should pursue something like this for them if they are not gonna have legal status by the end, by the time they graduate high school? Uh, that's a tough question to answer, but we have somebody on campus. If you wanna email me and tell me exactly what that is, we can work through that on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, sometimes it, it depends on what their asylum status is and where, where it is. We do work with undocumented students. We don't make a distinction. You come in, you say where you are, we give you a number, and you just go on and, and take the courses. But what I, if I understand your question correctly, when we get into that uh, uh, the, the status of someone, the diplomatic status, there are a couple of more steps that we have to take, and we can work through that on a case-by-case -case to see. Because if you said there's children, there's a probably a slightly different process than there might be for an adult without children. So I'm going to put that my email in the chat and I'll be expecting an email from you. Definitely. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, we'll get you connected to the people who can really have more expertise than I do. Okay. Okay. You guys are going to let me off early, huh? No, you have to stay on because there are more questions at the end. <laughs> I, I see. <laughs> I just thought I would just have a moment. <laughs> thank you so, so much, Ken, for that wonderful presentation. And thank you to all the panelists who uh, answered questions and gave great pr presentations that will give a holistic view of, of employment resources in the county. Uh, we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about a McHale resource that was developed by Anna DeNicolo and Rudy Jung called the Job Search Skills for the English Language Learner Toolkit. And this would be a great time for you to maybe put some notes in the Jamboard that I will put in the link again. Um, so I'm going to pass it on. Oh, Shannon, you have a question before I go? Um, I guess maybe an announcement, a comment, something. Um, but yeah, I'm here representing CASA's education department, but just wanted to let people know that we also have a community economic development uh, department that provide some services similar to those that were being presented by the other panelists. Um, one is uh, we have our welcome centers where day laborers can come to negotiate um, work contracts with um, employers, local community members, um, you know, in need of hiring somebody for a day or two, a, a week long project. Um, but for those who come into the centers, for those, um, you know, day labor type of employments, um, it's a great opportunity for professional so social networking, so that um, they're able to transition into more stable, full time, uh, permanent employment opportunities. Um, we have welcome centers in uh, Silver Spring, in Rockville, and in Montgomery County. Uh, we also have a small business um, program. We can support community members in becoming small business owners. And um, you know, part of that is having your individual tax identification number to um, you know, be legally licensed with um, that small business. But ITIN is also important to undocumented community members for filing taxes. So um, you know, kind of two different angles of people are in need of that. Um, you know, service that's something that we provide as well. Um, and also within our community economic development department, we partner with Montgomery College and Prince George's Community College to provide uh, workforce development courses at our CASA centers. And so, uh, you know, sometimes we're working in partnership with independent um, consultants, but most of the time it's with professors from the local community colleges who, again, right, they're coming, they're 
providing their courses on site. And so, you know, oh, and at the end of the day, you know, when the person finishes, um, they're receiving their certificate of completion, diploma, whatever it might be for that course, it's coming um, from the community college, um, you know, so that it's credited. Um, and so for a lot of people, just that that comfort of going to, you know, more of a, a local setting instead of onto a large campus, uh, that can be a big support in their uh, professional transition. Uh, but for those courses, we accept anybody, regardless of immigration status, um, you know, as long as they are 18 and over, um, they're able to enroll, depending on the course. Uh, sometimes they're English only, sometimes they're Spanish only, uh, other times they're bilingual. Um, and so I can drop, you know, contact information in the chat for uh, representatives of those programs to talk about, you know, what specific courses are being offered right now. But I know some of our popular ones are HVAC, um, CDA for those who want to become licensed child care providers. Um, a um, home improvement business license, uh, building maintenance engineer, uh, and electricity are the big ones. Thank you so much, Shannon. And um, someone asked if you could please put your email in the chat. So Shannon will put that in there and you can definitely reach out to her. Thank you. Um, and, oh, let me just pass it over to Anna and Rudy. Thank you so much, Grace. Oh. Um, we. We wanted to just take the opportunity to um, speak a little bit about the latest toolkit that Mikhail has produced, especially because it's, it's related to the topic being talked about today. Um, I'm really pleased that our job search skills for adult the adult English um, language learner, I think, I'm not sure if that's exactly it, but it's close enough, um, uh, came out in October. And uh, we were really pleased to be able to work with Anna DiNicolo, who pulled together a lot of information together. Um, and uh, just to note that this uh, toolkit is a um, uh, is meant to be used by adult ESOL instructors. Um, so um, maybe I'll say a, a few more words at the end of, of Anna's presentation. Hi, everybody. It's great to see you all here and uh, a lot of familiar faces and some new ones. And I'm, I was really glad to work on this project, which uh, a number of folks here uh, were involved with over the years. This is an update of a former, a prior uh, toolkit, actually. And, you know, that it's great to be here with all of you because, you know, this all of your programs, including Mikhail, are some of the amazing resources available to our immigrant community and our um, English language learner community in Montgomery County. However, there are still a lot of challenges that our learners face. Um, one of them is that they have to learn English and they have to learn job skills and they have to work. Uh, so they have very little time. And, um, and another aspect of it, is, uh, another aspect of the challenge is that teachers, ESOL teachers who may want to incorporate um, job search skills into the classroom or who might want to share some of these resources like all of you, these programs that you, all of you are offering with their students may not have that knowledge. And so those are a couple of things that we were seeking to address with this toolkit. Let's see if I can get it to move on. There we go. So there are three goals of the toolkit. Um, and I'm going to hopefully be able to show you a little bit of it in a second. Um, but basically to up update ESOL instructors on the current job search you know, reality, identify job search skills that can be integrated into classes, and those fall into two two different categories. One is how can, there are so many, and this has been mentioned, so many of the soft skills that really apply in a lot of different situations, like, you know, talking to your child's teacher has some similarity. Maybe, you know, for, for example, you need to do small talk in that. You also have to use small talk in the, in a job interview or at a job um, fair. So, finding ways to incorporate those kind of skills into your standard lesson, ESOL lesson and any topic. 
And then the other area is many of our standard ESOL textbooks, using ventures as an example, will have a chapter focused on employment, but it might not be up to date. It might not uh, serve the needs adequately of your students. It might not have enough examples. It might also expect the, the instructor to do a lot more than the instructor has time to do in terms of preparation. And then lastly, the job, uh, the, the toolkit includes learning resources available locally. I believe all of your programs are, list, are, are listed with links um, in the toolkit. And there are many, so many wonderful online free training of, uh, programs, including, for example, the one that James I mentioned. Real estate investor um, that's available clubs, through Work uh, Montgomery. Once a month, uh, Sorry, give me one second. second. In it's, South Florida, where I live, you could please mute. Six in South Florida, so going to those investor one clubs. Second, please. Okay. Thank you. All right. So there's a lot of great online resources, but it might be hard that your instructors may not know about them. You may not know about them. And certainly your the learners may not know about them. And even if they, once they do, they'll need, they will probably need a little support in order to use them. Uh, so in terms of um, the, the instructors sort of orientation to the new job hunting reality. You know, now, of course, everything's online. That may not have been the case the last time one of your ESOL instructors was applying for a job. Um, and so the this whole process is reviewed in um, and updated in the toolkit. Each of the steps of the job search process is covered in this toolkit. Uh, and there's a chapter focused on each one. Each chapter includes the skills that um, learners will need, specific examples, vocabulary that instructors can incorporate into their lessons ex and exercises. And these can all be used online or in person. There are links to everything in the toolkit. And um, as I mentioned earlier, there are also uh, links to all the Montgomery County programs that um, that could benefit learners so that the instructors can refer them to you. Um, so for, let's see what the time is. Um, if we have time to do this, maybe we don't. So in terms of how instructors can use the toolkit specifically. So as I mentioned, some job skills are very transferable. One, a couple of examples are proofreading and editing, or asking for clarification, asking for you know repetition if someone didn't understand, um, and completing online forms accurately. I'm sure all of you are very familiar with the experience of your uh, learners applying for a program and making many many errors in the online form. This this problem in the context of applying for a job can make the difference between getting called for an interview or getting no response. And it's incredibly common, you know, in errors in, you know, the birthday, errors in the email address, the, ad the address, the phone number, et cetera. So to give a specific example um, of small talk, which I mentioned, um, we can, we, we selected Ventures third edition as a specific example here in unit one there is an exercise that lends itself very well to incorporating just the basics of how are you, what's up, how's it going, which actually can be very, very confusing because there's so many ways to say the same thing, yet the answers need to be done, made in a different way. Uh, we could easily uh, incorporate a little extra into the existing exercise in this unit one that will help the student use how's, how are you or other basic small talk examples um, in a more fluid, more comfortable way. And so here we, you know, we have a specific example of the, the from ventures, but then if we click here, here's a whole exer exercise about how are you, 
with 18 ways to answer. Um, and other, other examples, like every time you do a pair exercise, you could incorporate um, small talk. You could incorporate uh, the, um, gosh, I just spaced out on the name, but the, the active listening techniques. Stu this is something that some teachers could add in every day, every, at the start of every class. And I know that some teachers do this, but not all of them will have that experience of incorporating, you know, the weather, the current events, the sports, you know, um, also the body language so that it becomes very natural and takes a little of the stress out of the real life situation, which um, of course, every job interview, every job fair is going to have even more stress. It's gonna create a, even more stress for someone who's, who's in, uh, for whom English is their second language, as opposed to the stress that we are all experience, no matter how much experience we have with um, job searching. Um, if I have one more minute, I'm just going to show you uh, a page, Let's see if I can do it, from, um, from the actual toolkit, and so that you can get a sense of how uh, much is provided to the teachers and how easy it would be to incorporate it into their classes. So for here we're looking at the chapter focused on searching and applying for jobs online. And I just wanna show you that here are three job openings that um, teachers could use in a class and they could practice those vocabulary words. They could have their students um, complete the application. And then you can also see here, Montgomery County resources for jobs, job seekers, and um, a number of you are mentioned. Here's Career Catchers, Welcome Back Center is right there. Uh, there's information about minimum wage and of course, Maryland Workforce Exchange. If I move, go, and this is also can show you the really fun um, uh, format they have on the website. It's really easy to use. And here are some online resources that are available in the wider internet world. All of them are free, easy to use. There are some great, you know, videos, you know, from GCF Learn Free, from digitallearn.org. I recommend not just handing the link to your students, but actually helping them log in, helping them get oriented. And then, then you know, some of them will be able to use it right away on their own. Others will have, uh, need a little bit more support. Uh, so I think I'll, I will stop here and turn it over to Rudy. And, um, but if you have questions, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're and, and feedback, love to hear from you. Thank you, Anna. Um, I just wanted to mention that um, Mikhail is planning to do a, um, a workshop on how to use uh, the toolkit in the classroom, and it will probably be in the spring sometime. So um, thanks. Grace, back to you. Thank you so much. I want to um, share my screen uh, because I would like to show all of the um, all the speakers information um, so that anybody can take a screenshot, but please note that I will also send this this uh, information to you as well as um, the, the dif different links that we talked about today. So let me pop that on my screen really quickly. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, can everyone see that? Okay, great. So if you would like, take a second to screenshot this or take a picture with your phone. Um, this is a list of the speakers that we had today as well as their, their emails. Again, I will be sending this later. Okay, I'll give it a few more seconds. Okay, so 
Uh, I would like to open up for Q&A for the next uh, five to, to seven minutes and uh, just uh, feel free to unmute yourself or put your things in the chat. And I will highlight the speakers. Hi, hi Grace. My name is Mariama Sai. So I heard, uh, you know, someone talking about the nursing assistant and all this. So I have many people that are legal and they they speak good English and they would love to have the training so that they can start their medical career. So do you have anywhere we can get them a free CNA class? Did you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I would, I am not super well versed with that, but I'm guessing that the person that you could contact is Ken Nelson with WDC B DC because they offer the um, classes. Let, oh, let me let him. Yes. Uh, send me an email. Yeah, uh, and uh, we can just come to, we'll get a team to come out and work with you, all right? I love your enthusiasm. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Any other questions? I just want to comment how important it is, Grace, because even though we know each other's organizations, uh, there is so many resources and being able to cross our names between our resources and I, I, I myself have been so excited to see each of you showing um, um, Dr. Kenneth and um, and showing the resources, uh, Dr. Hill, James. I mean, it's good to have this exposure because then we are um, able to help better people. I'm even thinking of bringing each of you, anybody, to come and do what you just did today to some of our staff or figure out ways to have more of this exposure is wonderful. And thank you, Grace. I think this has been fantastic. I am glad that I had to jump in last minute and I put the presentation, even though it's a little simple, but yes, please share my contact information. I'll be happy to connect with anybody after this. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Carmen. And thank you for to all the speakers. Uh, and thank you to everyone who joined us. This was great. I put, um, I'm put i putting in the chat a survey. If you could please take a uh, chance, it's a short survey, to give me some feedback on this network meeting. And I will also send this information as well as all the PowerPoints and anything that we shared to, uh, to you in an email afterwards. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Good to see everybody. Bye. Thank you. Does, does this mean goodbye until thank next you so time? Much. Yeah. Uh, thank, <laughs> you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you right. so much. Thank you, Grace, for the opportunity. I hope we met your needs. And if not, thank you. give us a call and we'll make certain you get the help you need. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. That goes to anybody. Bye. All right. Bye. Take care.